and I'm from Wuhan. I worked in a Wuhan hospital of traditional Chinese and Western medicine. Um, today, I will introduce uh, three parts uh, of content, uh, contents. The first part is the introduction of SARS-CoV-2 detection experiences. And the second part is talk about the antigen test methods. And the third part is the biochemical indicators for diagnosis of pneumonia infected with SARS-CoV-2. So right now, let's begin the first part of today's contents. First, let's introduce uh, the detection of SARS-CoV-2 experiences. As we all know that by the end of 2019, a variation of virus SARS virus uh, spread all over the world. Till now, the epidemic situation is also serious. So I think the detection of this virus is very important. The process of the SARS-CoV-2 detection uh, will have six steps from sampling and uh, sampling transfer and uh, receiving samples, testing, report results, and medical waste treatment. It's a closed loop and a seamless. I can't say which, uh, which step is the most important, but I want to tell um, that all of the steps are very important. The first step, sample connections. The sample connections um, can be arranged in different places, and such as in hospital and the CDC. The CDC is the Centers for Disease Control and the Health Center in residence community and the quarters in school at the airport, transportation, uh, train station, and market, in hotel, in factory, and corporation, and a test site or mass screen, uh, mass screening. We can use uh, many samples for SARS-CoV-2 detection. The first tries are the throat swab or nasopharyngeal swabs. And these two samples, uh, these two types of samples uh, is test for the nucleic acid and the anti antigen. And the second uh, sample, we can use the venous blood connection and these samples can be used to detect an uh, antibody. And also we can use the feces and the saliva. It also can be used for the nucleic acid and antigen detection. And the materials of the sample connections, we need sampling swab with inactive, uh, inactivated connecting tubes. In the tube, we have the buffer, and I recommend the buffer with the gardening salt. The gardening salt can be inactive the virus. And we also need a sample barcode and the information system. And three, we need the PPE, that is the personal protective equipment. This is used to protect our technicians. And also we need transport boxes and a ceiling barcode. It will uh, help us for the sample quality. And after our work, uh, we need this infection. We can use the 40 and the 75% medical alcohol, or we can use the ultraviolet light. And the light need be on for 30 minutes at least. And also we can use the active chlorine. So you can see the picture on the right. This is with the tube we used. And uh, an outside tube, it has the barcode and the information on it. And uh, here we can use, we can mix some samples in one tube. Uh, later I will tell you our experience of the mixed samples. 
So the sample connection, we need to choose an open and well-ventilated site. And we need to separate the zoom. And the sample connection zoom, we divide it into the waiting area and the sampling connection area. We can't put these two areas together. And we need to check the information of the label and the registration form of the exit question two to ensure that they are correct, complete, and uh, constant in number. And for the technician, we need the biological safety third level protections. So you can see the picture. We can uh, arrange the sample connection in the square or outside our room, uh, our house. But we just need to have the well validated, and also it's um, with the separated zoom. And for the sample selection, um, I think for the different purpose, we can use we can choose different sample types. For the population screening or the centralized isolation of personal. Uh, the first choice is the nasopharyngeal swab, and the second choice is oral pharyngeal swab. For the hospitalized persons with no infection, we can use butum, nasopharyngeal swab, oral pharyngeal swab, or sliver, sliver or the feces, because you know that some patients uh, with uh, some patients infected with the virus may have some <laughs> syndrome of um, gastrointestine. So we may can use, uh, use the physics samples for the RNA detection. And for the high, for the high risk population and regions, single sampling and a single detection is recommended. But in the median, or the low risk of population and the regions, we can use the mixed sample. Mm. We recommend 10 in one tube mixed sampling, but for the detection, we um, recommend a single detection. That means we can um, sample, we can sample and um, for 10 samples in one tube for our detection. And this is useful for the mass screening. For the sample connection, um, we will introduce the method of the connection of the throat swab or nasopharyngeal swabs. In the picture on the left, you can see that is the throat swab. We need to touch the tongue cell in our urinal. The throat is swept in the area of the tonsils, and then we'll uh, turn around for two or three times. Then the swab is okay. If we want to um, connect the nasopharyngeal swabs, we need to insert deeply and uh, straight uh, to the nasopharynx, and uh, also we will turn around for two or three times then we will take it out and it's prepared in the tube. These steps are very important for the detection because the sample quality is the um, important in, in fact factor for our detection. After the sample connection, uh, we need to transfer the samples. We use the barcode on our tube and a unique, a unique, un, unique barcode for the one tube. After we take the samples together, we can put uh, one barcode on our box. And the box is sealing and it's very strong so that we can avoid bumping or dropping of our samples and it will be safer for us. When we're receiving the samples, we can use our information system. We can scan the barcode on the box. Then we will know the information of the samples, how many samples and where are they connected and when 
are they connected and when are they transferred or received. After these steps, we will make sure that it arrived uh, at our uh, laboratory. So the whole process is closed and seamless. After we receiving our samples, the first step, we need to check the quality of our tubes. We will see if any empty tube or unqualified samples. Then we will return it to the uh, connecting uh, to the sample connection person and uh, make the record to tell them to reconnect the sample again. And for the qualified samples, we will number them and send them for testing. Here are our workers to numbering our samples. I think some rules is better for the numbering. We need enough people, uh, maybe the volunteers, and uh, synchronize with the work time of the test team. The number according to the number rules of 1 to 90, or 101 to 190, 201 and 290. Because each test board has 90 tests, and we also um, put the three negative controls and one positive control, one environmental black control for PCR room and one retest position. All the samples received are from the all day and uh, the number from the first for the convenience of the statistics. So we will start numbering again the next day and we will distinguish by date. Here we can see the three types method of the SARS-CoV-2 detection is for the antibody test, antigen test, and the nuclear acid test. I think all the Mm, testing, uh, all the detection of SARS-CoV-2 can be dealt with in hospital or ICL. ICL is the Independence Clinical Laboratory. The, mm, it includes the antibody and antigen and the nuclear acid detection. And the requirements for the nuclear acid or antigen, we will uh, deal in the BSL-2 that is the biosafety level uh, second lamp or BSL3 lamp. And we need a separated zoom in the PCR lamps. And the technician, we need train first, and then we can do the test. And we need biological safety third level protection for the technicians. The biological safety third level protection for the technician, we need N95 masks, and goggles, protective face screen, and uh, legs gloves. And we need double, double gloves, and a protective suit, and waterproof boots. You can see the picture uh, in, on the right below. That is the uh, safety biological safety third level protection, like this. And this is required for the nucleic acid and the antigen. But the requirements for the antibody that may be simple. We can do this detection in BSL-1 or BSL-2 lamps. We also need a technician. While the biological safety and second level protection for the technician, we just need the surgical mask a latex glove or protective shoot. You can see the picture uh, on the right upper, like this. All of our detection only can be done in the hospital or in the laboratory. For the testing, the division of SARS-CoV-2 nuclear acid detecting laboratory according to the needs of the hospital and the equipment configuration to design SARS-CoV-2 nuclear acid detection laboratory.
the traditional PCR laboratory is okay, and the um, traditional PCR laboratory is divided for uh, invited into four areas or rooms. That are there are reagent preparation room, sample reparation room, nucleic acid amplification room, and the product analysis room. You can see the picture on the left. Here we have four rooms and also with the buffer area and the special cordial for the PCR and one entrance and one exit in the different places. If we don't have enough space, and we can set the SARS-CoV-2 RT-PCR laboratory only for three areas or three rooms, that they are reagent preparation room, sample preparation room, and we can put the nucleic acid application and the product analysis room together in one room. But we need to make sure the airflow direction is correct and also for the entrance and edit, exit. For the device of the SARS-CoV-2 nuclear acid extracting lamps, we need in the BSL-2 laboratory or BSL-3 laboratory. And we also need the biological safety third level protection for our technicians and also with the biological safety cabinet with the discharged discuss, gas, gas. The fully automated nucleic acid extra, uh, extractor can be used for the mass samples. And we also need high-speed centrifuge and pipes for 10 microliter, 200 microliter, and 1,000 microliter. And we so we need a thermal state for the heating types and also the mobile um, ultraviolet lamp. This can be used for the disinfection. This is the pictures of our laboratory. And for the application lamp for the uh, detection of the nucleic acid, we can also use uh, the PCR system. And we also need in the BSL-2 lamp and with the bio, biological safety third level protection for our technicians and real-time PCR system and a mobile ultraviolet lamp. After our testing, I think the disinfection are very important because for the waste, we need to um, disinfection them and then we can discard them. For the solid waste, we need to disinfect it with the high pressure steam. Um, we recommended 121 PA for 30 minutes. But for the liquid waste, they are soaked in the active chlorine for 30 minutes or more. And also for our room, like the floor or the table, we can use the 55, uh, 75 percent medical alcohol or we can use the ultraviolet light for 30 minutes or we can use the active chlorides and the concentration of active chlorines and we can use 500 to 2000 um, milligram per liter. You can see these waste are all um, disinfected and then we can discard them. So, and that's the experience of our detection. After that, I will introduce the antibody and antigen rapid test method for all of you. The SARS-CoV-2 test method, we have three uh, detection methods. First is the RT-PCR test. This test is for the virus RNA and the antibody test these are for the antibody for person's blood. But today I will introduce the test of antigen of the virus. Antigen test basically looks for rows fragments of antigens within person's body to see if they are infected with the virus. So 
the purpose of the antigen of the virus is to look for the nuclear capsid proton of the virus. The SARS-CoV-2 N antigen, that is the nuclear capsid antigen. The test region is coated with the mouse monoclonal anti SARS-CoV-2 antibody against N antigen. Detectors for the SARS-CoV-2 N antigen presented in the specimen are mouse monoclonal monoclonal anti sars cov 2 antibody con conjugated with color particles. The antigen antibody color particle complex migrates with wise capillary force and is captured by the mouse monoclonal anti sars cov 2 antibody coated on the test region. The control region is coated with the mouse monoclonal anti chicken and Ig gamma antibody. This is the test principle of the antigen. And the samples used for antigen test, we recommend the respiratory samples. We can also use the throat swab, and nasopharyngeal swabs, and also the endotracheal aspirate and, sput and sputum. And the specimens were processed in the biosafety level 3 or the biosafety level 2 facilities. The pencils were mixed in 2 um, milliliters of the viral transport medium and transported at 2 to 8 and centigrade to the microbiology laboratory. The 200 microliter of each nasopharyngeal and throat swab specimens was added to the extraction buffer provided in the kit. Three chops of the extra samples were applied on a tested device, and the test result was read in 15 to 30 minutes. For positive COVID-19 antigen result, two colored lines of the control and the test lines were presented. Here you can see the results in the picture on the left. A, B, C, D, that is replaced for the control, negative, weakly positive, and the positive results. We will know the PPV, the meanings of PPV and the NPV of our antigen test. The PPV is the positive predictive value, and the NPV is the negative and predictive predictive value. The impact factor of the antigen test is re related with the bench of the kit reagent, the sample quality, the level of the viral loads in the specimen. So we need to know that a higher chance of the positive antigen detection at the early phase and the antigen detection kit may be recommended for patients at the early time point of the symptom onset. The sensitivity and specificity of our antigen test. In one study, the commercial available rapid antigen detection kit was compared with the RT-PCR assay for detection of the SARS-CoV-2 infection in the table two you can see the sensitivity and the specificity of these two tests. The sensitivity and the specificity can tilt to the 98 percentage. I think it's really high. And the total specimens are over 400 samples. Another report um, about the sensitivity and the specificity of the rapid antigen test of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, is about uh, 84 percentage for the sensitivity and uh, 100 percentage of the specificity. I think they are all good for this. And the results are all used the samples of the nasopharyngeal and the throat swabs. So with the re results, 
we need to know um, two situations. That is one is the false negative. That means this negative result may not real. It's uh, related with the type of the specimens, sample handling and the processing techniques, duration from disease onset to the laboratory test. And the second situation is the false the positive. That means this positive result is not true. It related with the thick and highly viscous markers and the infection with other pathogens or cross reactivity with other antigens. So we can estimate it that in a low COVID-19 prevalence area, the PPV, the PPV is the positive predictive value for this test is low. In the 10% COVID-19 prevalent rate, the PPV with NPV of the standard uh, antigen test would be 89% versus 99%. Well, in the 1% COVID prevalent rate, the PPV with the NPV of the standard antigen test would be low to the 43 percentage, uh, while the uh, and the 99 percentage. So the standard antigen might be useful in the high prevalence area. I think it's very important that you can choose the antigen test. Uh, maybe in the high prevalence area is better than they are used in the low prevalent area. Here are the samples used for the antigen test. You can see that use the nasopharyngeal swab and a throat swab, the antigen test and the sensitive of the antigen test may be higher than the samples with the sputum or the slivers. And the rapid antigen test was also, and uh, the results was also related with the uh, viral loads. The rapid antigen test was the uh, 1000 fold less sensitive than the viral control. And uh, 100,000 fold is for the PCR. You can see the table too. And that's the different sensitivity of the samples. You can see that for the narrow pharyngeal and the throat swab, the sensitive will be high than in the sputums. Well, the high viral load samples, the sensitive is uh, also higher, but in the normal viral load samples, the sensitive may be lower. So the advantage and the disadvantage of the SARS-CoV-2 antigen test one, as a screening for COVID-19, the antigen test is simple pre-schedule and a quick results with high NPV. That means with high negative predictive value. And its disadvantage is low positive per and predictive value in a low prevalent area. The rapid SARS-CoV-2 antigen test can benefit all healthcare workers in man uh, managing infected in individuals in time effectivity, especially in rural and outbreak areas. The nucleic acid test for the SARS-CoV-2 genes detection, which is more sensitive and specific than this lateral flow immunoassay is still a standard test for the COVID-19 diagnosis. Um, this is the um, product of the rapid uh, antigen test kit. The method is called the gold immunochromatography. The materials provided with the test card, sample treatment solution, FU, and swabs. 
the product need be stored um, at the room temperature, and it need to be kept dry and away from the sunlight, and will be um, done within one hour after unsealing. Here you can see our product the result reading window. We have the positive is for the two line and the negative result is for only one line on the control. And here are the operating steps and the sample handling area. And it's easier for swap to thread or prevent leakage. The operating step update have five operating steps. One, connect the samples, peel off adhesive, and inside the swap throw well B to well A, and add six drops and reaction buffer to well A. And float the left side and wait for 15 minutes. Then you can read the results. It will appear purple stripes in both quality control area and the test area, like this. And there is only one purple strip in control area without the purple strip in the test area that is the negative. If no purple strip in the control area, then the result is invalidated. Or the blue strip in the and control error is also inverted. The reason is for the incorrect operating procedure or maybe the card has already deteriorated and we need to retest the samples. The advantages of the test kit and that's for the antigen rapid test kit is non-invasive and simple to use. It's very convenient because we no need the required device. And this rapid get the results in 15 minutes and it's stable and it's very cheap than the other detection. But also it can be done in the hospital, in the clinical laboratory, pathology department, or reproductive centers and the diagnostic center or in the research in institute, university or the CDC. We count down in other places also. In the hospital or in the clinical laboratory, we just need the biological and safety third level protection for the technicians. And we only need a biological safety component and the centrifuge and the pipers and the mobile ultra white lamp. Conclusion, the re rapid point of care antigen for diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection. People with suspected COVID-19 need to know quickly whether they are infected so that they can self isolate, receive treatment and inform close contacts. Currently, COVID-19 infection is confirmed by sending away samples taken from the nose and throat for laboratory testing. The laboratory test called RT-PCR requires specialist equipment, may require repeat healthcare visits, and typically takes at least 24 hours to produce a result. Rapid point of care tests can provide the result while you wait within two hours of providing a sample. This could help people isolate early and reduce the spread of the infection. And the sensitivity varied considerable across studies from zero to uh, 94 percentage, and the average sensitivity was 56.2 uh, percentage, and the average specificity was 99.5 percentage. 
So that means the standard antigen test might be useful in the high prevalence area. And also the antigen test kit may be recommended for the patients at the early time point after symptom onset and during seven days after infection will be better. These are the curve of the PCR with antibody test with antigen test. So uh, you can see after the infection in the early stage, the nucleic acid and the antigen we can test during seven days. And after the 14 days, the concentration of these two types samples are lower, while the antibody elevate after the 21 days and the IgG will continue high after 28 days. That means if we want to um, test the early infection, we will choose for the PCR and antigen test. In this table, we can see the advantage and the disadvantage of these three tests. For the principle, the PCR is used for the RT-PCR amplification, and also for the antibody, we use ELISA or the immunochorophosis of the antibody and antigen. And the specimen types we can type for these three tests. We use the narrow, uh, we use the swab of the narrow pharyngeal and the sputum or the slivers we can use in the PCR, but only for the antibody, we just use the serum or the plasma. For the antigen, we use the swab. And the first choice is narrow uh, pharyngeal swabs. And the test content for the PCR is for the RNA detection and the antibody. And also for the antigen is virus N protein. So for the PCR and antigen, the, for the test detection, early test, uh, early detection and early treatment. But for the antibody, mm, that means you can um, wait. And after uh, seven days after symptoms, you can detect antibody. And for the time, for the PCR, maybe mm, PCR detection may take more times for two or three hours. But for the antibody and antigen, only within the um, 15 to 13 minutes is okay. And for the PCR with the high sensitivity and specificity and early detection and early treatment. And the PCR is the gold standard for the clinical diagnostic of COVID-19. For the antibody, it's easy operating, rapid resulting results and suitable for mass screening. And for the antigen, it's the early time of detection and easy operating, rapid result, suitable for mass screening as a supplement for the nucleic acid testing. And for the PCR, we need more uh, requires professional equipment, operators, and expensive and long turnaround time. The testing kept in many countries and regions is insufficient. But for the antibody, the early stage of the virus infection can't be provided. For the antigen, sensitive is not as high as PCR. That means in the high prevalence area, we can choose the antigen. And the sensitivity and the specificity that at PCR is the most uh, is the best. And the cost also, the PCR may be expensive, but the antibody and antigen, uh, it will be cheaper. So right now, the World Health Organization recommendation for the use of the SARS-CoV-2 antigen rapid detections because of its sensitivity and specificity. And many government and countries start to order rapid antigen tests. 
especially for the high prevalence area. Here we can see the global uh, partnership to make available more than uh, 120 million affordable quality of the rapid test for the low and the middle income countries. So I think the antigen test is suitable for the high uh, prevalence area and also the low income countries. You can choose this antigen test for the uh, epidemic of SARS-CoV-2. So let's have a rest. So thank you everybody. Let's have a 10 minutes break and the session will be resumed after 10 minutes. So during the break, you can put on all the questions you have during the session on the comment section. So um, Dr. Yu and my colleague will uh, respond there. Thank you. Okay. Um, as we all know that the blood samples is the common samples can be used in all of the laboratory in a hospital. So we can use the results of the white blood cell counts. The white blood cell counts is normal or reduced in the early phase after the symptom. Then it can be increased accompanied with the neutrophil counts increased when suffered with the secondary bacterial infection. But the lymphocyte count reduced in the early phase of the SARS-CoV-2 infection and the continuous decrease with the disease progression. So if one um, person with the symptom of fever or other uh, symptoms of the pneumonia, we can see the results of his uh, blood tests. If we can see the white blood count is abnormal and also the lymphocyte count is low, maybe the person <laughs> maybe uh, in I was infected. And the second uh, biochemical markers is the C reactive protein. It's one kind of the acute phase protein and it can increase in the early phase after infection and the level was re uh, related with the progression and the progress the prognosis of the patients. And the ESR is also can be used for um, the diagnosis of the SARS-CoV-2 infection. That is the uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which can calculate in early phase. The level was also related with the progression and the prognosis of the patient. What does this mean? That means if this, uh, this is, is the levels of these two bioco biochemical markers are high, maybe the outcome of the patient is, is worse. The higher, the worse. And D-dimer, which is associated with the thrombosis, the elevated concentration predict a poor prognosis of the patient. The marker is important during the clinical treatment of the patient infected with the SARS-CoV-2. We can see many um, patients infected with the SARS-CoV-2, the levels of the dedima is very high. That means the outcome of these patients are not good. And PCT, PCT repress the procantonin normal in the early phase 
well elevated with the cone infection of the bacteria. And the marker is associated with the progression and the prognosis of the patients. FER, that is the ferritin, another kind of the acute phase protein, which increased in early phase, and the level was related with the progression and the progresses of the patients. And the inflammatory factors, such as the interleukin-6, SAA, that is the serum amyloid protein, the factors elevated in the early phase and associated with the progression and the prognosis of the patients. So, if uh, we don't have the uh, nucleic acid detection reagent and uh, uh, either we don't have the antigen detection reagent, we can use these common biochemical markers for the diagnosis of the infection. And then we can uh, make tries to isolate the patients, the suspected patients, and uh, control the epidemic. You can see these figures. The fig one is a uh, comparison of the peripheral lymphocyte subsets between the COVID-19 uh, pneumonia patients and the healthy control. You can see from the pictures, in the pneumonia um, patients, the total lymphocytes is lower than the healthy control. And also the subsets are lower too. And the figure two is the uh, lymphocyte subset levels and the disease and severity in COVID-19 uh, pneumonia. And we can see that. The surf pneumonia, the total lymphocytes are lower than the mild or moderate patients. Also, the subset levels are lower either. And, and I think the lymphocytes count and the uh, percentage of the lymphocyte is sensitive in the SARS-CoV-2 infection patients. And then we can use uh, these two figures. Fig three, that is the timeline charts illustrating the dynamic profiles of the hemocyte counts among patients at three days interval based on the days after the first symptom onset. You can see A, that is the white blood cell count. You can see the dynamic profiles. After the patients were infected with the virus and SARS-CoV-2, you can see in the surf person that will be higher than the non soft patients with the days. Well, for the uh, lymphocyte count, you can see that the patients, the surf patients with lower lymphocyte counts than the non surf patients. In the picture C on the left, and also you can see the dynamic of the uh, neutral field count and also the monocyte count. And you can see the pictures on the right. That's the scatter plot of the hemocyte counts at initiation onset and a uh, um, convalescence in the patients discard, discharged from the hospital. That means when the patients is recovery, the uh, white blood cell can be returned to normal. And also the lymphocytes counts can uh, return to the normal level. But if this, uh, if the patient's um, prognosis or the outcome are not good, 
maybe the white blood count uh, well, as well as the lymphocytes count maybe can worse too. So we can use the hemocyte counts as a potential biomarker for predicting the disease progression in the COVID-19. And it's useful uh, in our treatment of our patients. Here, um, we can see other biochemical markers like the CRP, PCT, ferritin, and the D-dimer, or the interleukin-6. They are all connect and connected with the uh, surface of the COVID-19. We can see that in the surf or critical surf patients infected with the SARS-CoV-2 patients, the CRP, the level of CRP and the PCT and the FER along with the D-dimer are higher than in the patients, in the moderate patients. What does this mean? You can see this figure. This figure is the hazard ratio of the prognosis of the COVID-19. The variables, we can use the FER, inlogakin 6, and white blood count, and the lymphocyte percentage or PCT, and the D-dimer, and the CRP, and also the CA, and these markers. And the hazard ratio are from this figure. You can see the florist plot of the CA, CRP, D-dimer, ferritin, ilu lacking 6 and the lymphocyte percentage, along with the PCT and the white blood count levels, and with other factors to assess the prognosis of the COVID-19 patients. If this uh, variables or the levels of these markers as uh, continue is high, maybe the outcome of the patients are worse. If when these markers can return to normal, and um, that means the patients may be recovery. So we can do use um, these bi biochemical markers for the treatment of the um, disease. And the figure like this is the survival curves constructed for the different initial levels of these biomarkers. I introduce uh, as below. That amount of patients, you can see if the uh, CEA over 33.45, that means the outcome is not good. And also if the initial CRP, the levels of CRP is over 100.2.8, that mean, also mean the patient, the outcome of the patient is worse either. And along with the uh, D-dimer or uh, ferritin and also the level aside percentage and uh, PCT, that also can mean the prognostic value of a clinical biochemistry-based uh, nomogram for the coronavirus disease 2019. This is the construction of a normal gram to predict the overall survival of the patients and suffered with the COVID-19, compressing and CA levels and other significant indicators. Then we can use the age and the admission classification and also the wet blood counts and the new field percentage also the ferritin and the CEA levels, and along with the D-dimer. 
Again, with the level on the left, we can go the scores. And then we can uh, sum the scores together, then we will have a total points. And with the total points, we can predict the one month survival probability and or two month survival probability here. So I think that means uh, we can use these markers to predict the overall survival of the patients uh, with uh, suffered with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And then we can uh, make some decision of the treatment and uh, um, according to the levels of the change of these markers to, uh, for the treatment of the patient. So the rapid uh, biomarker for the diagnosis of the SARS-CoV-2 infection, the levels of certain inflammatory biomarkers, such as the C reactive protein, uh, lymphocyte percentage, uh, neutrophils percentage, interleukin-6, and the procantonin, and ferritin, the dimer, and the wet blood cell count have been used to assess disease progression. And according to the hazard ratio for the prognosis of the risk variables for the COVID-19, the admission classification serve or critically serve and the age over 65 years old or the levels of the uh, ferritin over 900 and PCT over point, 0. Point Eight and the dimer over eight and the CRP over one hundred and two uh, milligram per liter or the white blood count over thirteen point sixty seventy six. Also, the uh, neutrophils over ninety two percent. 6% and the lymphocytes below 4.2% were higher risk factors for the overall, uh, overall survivals of the patients infected with the SARS-CoV-2. When we don't have SARS-CoV-2 detection reagent, just like the antigen or the nucleic acid or the antibody uh, and so on, we can find out the suspected patients with the SARS-CoV-2 infection by such biomarkers and uh, isolate them for more diagnosis and treatment. These rapid biomarkers are useful at the beginning of the epidemic. And uh, according to the change, the dynamic changes of these uh, markers, we can also help for the uh, recovery of the patients after our treatment of these patients. So in summary, um, the rapid self-COVID detection is helpful for the screening infected patients with SARS-CoV-2 antigen detection is useful at early phase and nucleic acid detection is the standard diagnosis of the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Both the antigen and the nucleic acid detection can be done in BSL-2, that means the biosafety level second or above laboratory, while the sampling can be arranged in many places, like at the airport, in the hostel, or in the company, or in the market. And the biological safety third level protection for the technicians. And the samples are transferred by the infectious and substance containers. And also the biological safety second level protecting for the sample transfer. Some biomarkers are useful at the beginning of the epidemic and the progression of the disease. We can find out the suspected patients and suffered with the SARS-CoV-2 infection by such biomarkers and isolate them for more diagnosis and treatment. And also the SARS-CoV-2 uh, antigen detection um, may be useful in the high prevalence area and also in the income, uh, in the 
median for the low income countries, you can choose the antigen detection of the SARS-CoV-2. So, um, these are the topic of today. And uh, right now, maybe we can have some discuss with each other for some questions. Thank you for all of you for the listening. So if you have any question, maybe we can discuss with each other. Oh, Okay, for this question, uh, I have one, oh yeah, and one uh, PPT, <laughs> in, in one part in my PPT, that is the comparison of the antigen test and the PCR test for the COVID-19. Uh, I think they are all important for the clinical value, but the sensitivities uh, of the antigen test uh, maybe not as high as the PCR uh, detection. 